Hey everyone, thanks so much for being here. Today we're gonna go into my secret lair and I'm gonna show you my entire collection here. If you're new to my channel, I basically right now have two collections. I have one here in California, which is my primary collection. And then I have another one back home in New York, which I will show you when I'm there. But today we're gonna have a look at my West Coast collection. Thank you to Grace Mwendi for suggesting that I film this video. And let's get started. y'all welcome to my secret cave this task feels like it's gonna be daunting i will try to keep it as synced as possible so we'll start here in the top shelf back here i have musk ravageur from frederick mall i have this actually in the oil form i bought this a long long time ago maybe like in 2007 or something like that um at a, a an event in chicago called Santa Palooza, which i will tell you about maybe another time uh, back here we have Zadegan Voltaire's this is her it's a beautiful like tonic woody scent that I'm sure you're familiar with this is Serge Luton's um, Centaur Majuscule this is Feminité du Bois this is De Terre Noir, which I mentioned was my very first niche purchase ever. And I recently just gifted Cher Guy to my father-in-law. He loved it more than I would wear it, so I figured send it off to a better home. This is Histoire de Parfum Noir Patchouli, which was actually both my husband and I's scent of the day for our wedding day. We were married in Florence, Italy, and he had his party bring the bottle to me so I could spray it while we were getting ready. It was, it was cute. I'm sorry if you can hear the train going by. Um, this is Zhivago 24K, which I talked about in my last video. My One of my high school signatures with the fun gold flecks inside in this little craggy stand. Um, back down here we have some of my Chanel's. This is Chanel Allure, the Eau de Parfum. This is like my third or fourth bottle of Allure now. I absolutely adore this. I've had the EDT as well and something called their Eau Fraiche Sant. It was like a hair and body mist version of it. Um, this is Chanel number no. five Eau Premier. This is Coco Eau de Parfum. This back here is my <laughs> prized little bottle of the Chanel number no. five Eau de Cologne of my mother's from way, way back in the day. And this is the travel set of Coco Mademoiselle Intense. I have the full bottle back in New York, but I like to have, you know, the little, little guys here. And a tiny mini of Chanel Cormandel. This is the cutest freaking thing ever in the world. I, I love that thing. I love my minis, as you will find. Um, here's another gem, Crazy Critzia, another Dominique Ropion creation, if I'm not mistaken. Kind of similar to... CK um, obsession and must de Cartier in that kind of vein, but I like this better because the dry down has a really interesting creaminess that I love. Here we have a Tat Libre Dorage Un Amaret, which is a really interesting patchouli kind of agicala wood, I believe it is. It's a woody, really interesting scent. I, I think I will do a full review of this because I really find that one interesting. Um, and then Noel O Balcon from the same company. This is my beautiful Lumiere Blanche from Olfactive Studio. As you can see, massive freaking dent in that one. Really nice, light, woody, lactonic sandalwood. You will find I love the lactonic woody sandalwoods and this one is definitely a favorite. And then we have Narciso White Cube and Gucci Memoir Dune Odeur, a little travel spray. This one's really reminiscent to me of Comme des Garçons Odeur 53, which I also really loved back in the day. This feels like a more wearable, lighter version of that one. And then of course, the inimitable Carnal Flower from Frederick Mall as well. Cartier, oops, <laughs> Cartier Bezet Volet, 
a Lily of the Valley scent. And then here we have Balenciaga Paris, which I keep in a little pouch just because I think it's cute. And then Unknown Pleasures by Kerosene. Um, back here we have Bade El Oud Amethyst, which is, I think, meant to be a dupe of uh, a mix between, um, what's it called, Initio, Atomic Rose, and Psychedelic Love. I really like this one a lot too. Beast, beast, beast mode longevity. Not huge sillage, but beast longevity. Back here is Bulgari Ote Noir. A beautiful rose, smoky, tea, black tea, oud kind of fragrance. Really lovely, very unisex. Here we have Kayed from Latafa. Let me try and get this open. The packaging is so cool. It's beautiful. Uh, Tobacco-y, spicy oud scent at an amazing price point. This down here is a funny one. <laughs> This one I actually won during the Scent Explore, this last year's Scent Explore, and it is a fragrance from Ignacio Figueres, who is, I guess, I think I want to say an Argentinian polo player? I think a polo player. And this fragrance is, um, it's called Aspen. It's got this amazing, I can get it off. A metallic cap. All right, I'm not gonna. F with that. Um, it's got a metallic cap. It is really not my cup of tea. It is a in the vein of Creed Aventus. My husband really does not like it too, so I think I'm gonna probably wind up selling this one. Um, but I'm just like cool. Like I won something. I won something, and I I'm always you know about about that. <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say. I don't like that one. Okay, moving down to the second layer. Uh, I have all my Muglers over here. So this is Angel O Sucre, which is a really delightful, sweet, lighter version of Angel. One of the few sweet scents that I really enjoy. I have this version and I have another version in New York. I think they issued them every year for a while. Um, this is Angel the Eau de Toilette. This is Angel uh, Etoile de Rev, I think is what it's called. It's like their night richer version of Angel. And this one is more like the very first formulation to me than the current uh, EDP. And this is an original vintage Angel. As you can see, the liquid has sort of become darker from the aging and the vanilla process. And down here we have Alien Musk Mysterio, which is so gorgeous. It is um, kind of oody and a dirty, pretty animalic musk on the base of Angel, or, or Alien rather. Uh, I don't think it smells very much like Alien, but the dry down really does present that jasmine pretty well. This is Alien O Extraordinaire. This is Mugler from their Miroir collection, Miroir Days on V, which is a really interesting, uh, bready kind of warm quasi gourmand fragrance. I talked about it in another video. I will link that above for you guys. This is Alien Fusion, which is really lovely. Original Alien, the OG. I have a tiny mini of Womanity and I have my mini of Aura and I have my full bottle of this one in New York. And YSL Lieb, of course, really lovely. One of the, my favorite designer releases of the last several years, for sure. The hype is real on this one, you guys. Um, Hermes Elixir de Merveille, which is a beautiful, musky, citrus, um, skin-like scent that I really enjoy. And then we're moving over here into my Guerlain's. Back here is La Petite Robe Noir Black Perfecto. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not pulling these up. Um, <laughs> funny fact, because all of these uh, are actually, I got, I guess it's called Museum Putty or something like that. It's like anti-earthquake stuff. 
I'm paranoid about the earthquakes here in the Bay Area, so I have all of the perfumes basically puttied down. So that's why I'm not pulling all of them up right now. So I'm a little um, I'm a little extra in that regard, I guess. Back here we have La Petite Robe Noir Eau Fraiche, which has a really fun pistachio note. I love pistachio in a fragrance. This is Le Blue, the Eau de Parfum. Absolutely so comforting. I love this one as a bedtime scent or after bath scent. Mitsuko, the Eau de Toilette, another one of my absolute favorites. If I had to pick one fragrance, I think it would be Mitsuko. Probably the EDP though. This one's the Eau de Toilette, but it's also really, really beautiful. This is Mont Guerlain Sensuel, which is very similar to the original Mont Guerlain, maybe a little bit um, rounder and warmer, but super, super similar. This is Mont Guerlain Bloom of Rose, the Eau de Toilette, which is just a nice, light, um, everyday, easy reach kind of fragrance. And then down here, finally, the Mont Guerlain floral which may be my favorite mongrelon it is reminiscent to me a little bit those floral notes of the old tuscany porgiana from estee lauder this is the beautiful terracotta le parfum nice beachy summery floral really creamy scents a little bit sweet uh, this is chalamar souffle de parfum really beautiful version of Shalimar. I have a hard time with the original Shalimars, but um, these, while I mean, some would argue that they don't really have that Shalimar DNA, are beautiful nonetheless. I really love those. And Insolence, the Eau de Parfum, absolutely fabulous violet fragrance, so unique. This is one of my top favorites. I love violet fragrances, and this is just really concentrated violet in a beautiful way. And then we have Samsara, the Eau de Parfum. And what can I say about it? It's a beautiful sandalwood fragrance. It's not the same. I mean, some, you know, the reformulation of this one is not um, great, but it still keeps the fragrance mostly, mostly intact. And I still really love that one. And then we have Guerlain Ideal, which is a nice musky floral that is really easy to wear. Um, yeah, you're. You're uh, almost a generic seeming musky floral, but I really love it. And I, I love this in the old style, old bottles when they, uh, you know, the original release bottles rather. Um, this is Shalimar Cologne, which is, oh my gosh, this one is stunning. I have to actually smell this. Mm -hmm. Oof, it is a beautiful powdery citrus, citrusy, super uh, lightweight, ultimate powdery fragrance. I don't know what else to say about it. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Um, if you can get your hands on this, do. I know that it's discontinued, but I, I've, I feel like you're still able to find it on, on um, some eBay sites and, and whatever. This one is so, so stunning. Uh, this is a Shalimar Eau de Toilette. Smells terrible on me, smells amazing on my husband, so he wears this more often than I do. And and some buglers that I missed. I don't know how I missed these. Um the Muse Eau de Parfum and the Muse Eau de Toilette, both really heavenly favorites of mine. And then moving down here, we have Prada Candy, EDP. Um, yeah, you guys are familiar with that. <laughs> Kenzo Amore. This is um, Estee Lauder Bronze Goddess Eau Fraiche Skin Scent from a while ago. This is actually my second bottle of this. I really love it. It is the perfect musky, beachy scent that is not too like suntan lotion-y. There's something indescribable to me about it, and I picked up this second bottle of it uh, on Mercari pretty recently because I missed having it in my collection. This is Aromatics Elixir, the infamous. This is YSL Manifesto Le Clot. It's basically Manifesto with an interesting tea note. These down here, this is Nina Ricci Rose Absolute, ex like Stas Rose Absolute, I think that's what it's called, yeah. Some people say that it is a pretty good dupe for Oud Satin Mood. I have not tried that one, but they're both by Francis Kirkjohn. And it's a really nice um, jammy rose, darker jammy rose 
fragrance. And this is Nina Ricci Rose Extase. It is a powdery type of rose fragrance. People compare this to Delina. I can see the comparison. They're both uh, sweet light roses with some interest in there, um, but I wouldn't say it's a dupe. This is my beloved Cabochard by Grey. This is Burberry Her, the Eau de Parfum. This is Cheruti 1881, another one of my old school favorites. I think this bottle is something like 25 years old, I want to say. And it still smells great. This is, I mean, just classic. It's really beautiful. Chamomile heavy fragrance. I love the note of chamomile. Down here we have one of my old school Paco Rabanne ultraviolets. <laughs> I just love this fragrance. I don't care what anyone says. It's a beautiful violet peppery, really interesting fragrance to me. I think it really evokes that ultraviolet like turn of the century, turn, you know, the year 2000 Y2K kind of feel. I really love that one. Um, Lolita Lampica, I'm sure requires no introduction. This is Costume National 21, which is another really interesting cardamom, lactonic, woody scent. I love Costume National as a house. I feel like they're really underrated. I absolutely adore almost all of the fragrances of theirs that I have tried. 21 is really a gem. Um, and here are my tiny vintage. This is Estee Lauder Tuscany Perdana, and this is Mitsuko, the Eau de Parfum, and this is Musque de Cartier. Let me go into my other little minis here. Prada La Femme, uh, JP, what is it? JPG, you know what I'm talking about. What is it called? La Belle, that's what it is. <laughs> Prada Candy Gloss and Flower Balm Dew by Victor and Rolf. And then this is just an Egyptian musk oil that I really enjoy. This over here is Aqua Divina from Bulgari. This one is a little bit on my chopping block. I like the scent profile. The opening's really interesting, but the dry down has just, I don't know, it's something stabby to the third eye in the dry down of this one. I'm gonna try layering it and see what how I feel because I really, I really love Bulgari fragrances. They have a DNA that I like, but this one was interesting to me. This is just something, um, I've named it Overlay. You can see it's rubbing off. Uh, just a little concoction I've whipped up as a layering agent using some, some diffusing kinds of molecules. And um, it's nice to layer over some fragrances, give it a little bit of interest. Over here we have Parfums de Marly Delina which I'm sure requires a no introduction either. I have my angel um, body cream and my little travel spray of the current formulation of angel that, as I said before, I wear it just for my enjoyment because my husband thinks I smell like an armpit. Okay, this is Casablanca from Swiss Arabian. This one's kind of on my chopping block. I really like it, but it's a little, to something for me. Um, definitely when I tried it in New York, it, it just did something wrong on my skin. So I'm testing it out again here to see if it behaves differently. I haven't really given it a good wear test here yet. So we will see, but right now that's a chopping block one. Down here is just little stuff that I, I'm gonna sell on more cards. So Swiss Arabian oil, some Demeter, some little um, beauty sample stuff. Okay, here we are up here in my little um, travel spray rollerball area. I'm not going to go through all these or we'd be here forever, but these are pretty much all my scent birds. Yeah, I guess there's not really too much to say about that. Try to write the names here so I can access them more easily. These are just a little bit more of my decants. These are my small collection of oil perfumery dupes. They're pretty hit or miss. Um, let me know if you guys would be interested in a review of the oil perfumery uh, since, yeah, they're, they're pretty hit or miss, but I do, I really like them as a concept. Um, these are just some other little, little decants and things like that. Um, Kenzo Jungle Lelephant. This one I think I'm gonna get a full bottle of soon. 
It's really spicy, interesting fragrance. These are some of the fragrances I was talking about in my last video from Love Potion Magical Perfumery. They have really interesting, interesting gourmandy, sweeter scents. Pie in the Sky, this one's a really uh, literal gourmand, graham cracker crust, creme brulee type of coconut cream pie fragrance. Really delicious. This is Evil-ish. That's a vanilla sandalwood type of fragrance. I won't get too much into these because I have a billion of them. But back here we have some Discovery sets. This is the Julia Has a Gun. Um, Milano Fragrance, which is a new house from the Mask Milano people. I will do a full video on this because I was really impressed with their fragrances. Um, oops, this is falling. Okay, Laboratorio Olfativo. This is a really nice big Discovery set. There's a, a whole bunch in there and I really loved those. Um, this is Ormond Jane, the Discovery Lab, and then the massive Etat Libra Dorage Discovery set with, I think there's like 20 something fragrances in there. Um, down here, I'm gonna, yeah, my Aura Mugler box. I love to keep these boxes for this purpose. Um, this is where, oh God. So I keep a whole bunch of samples in here. All Effective Studio is absolutely one of my favorite houses. Um, various Chanel's, Memo's, uh, Burdu. This one I really love. I'm trying to track this one down. I think it's been discontinued, but Masai Mara, really nice spicy fragrance. Um, what else is in here? David Yerman, Eau de Parfum. Um, let's see. Let me take this down here. I don't know if you guys care about any of this, but Swiss Arabian samples, some Teo Cabanel, some Byredo, Tiziana Terenzi, I think this is. Yeah. And then um, down here is where I keep the samples that I'm testing out right now. These are all um, some niche samples, Arquiste, and, um, well, I'm not going to go into all these. Anyway, <laughs> this is where I'm, I keep the samples that I'm actively testing or considering bottles of down here. Um, and then down here is the disgusting, embarrassing mess of rollerball fragrances that I have from Love Potion Magical Perfumery. Oh my god. Talk about an obsession. So those are all the rollerballs. I try to again put the put the um, names on the top so I can grab them easily. And all these samples. These are all boxes full of samples all like this. It's kind of nuts. Kind of excessive all of those there's two more boxes down there of samples like that um i'm not sure what these are i think these are just random random decants from friends uh on the love potion magical perfumery forum that we used to trade fragrances in that way so yeah, that is it. That is pretty much, I think, pretty much everything. I mean, there might still be stuff hanging around in Nook's so I'll back in to show you guys a few that I did miss because they live in my husband's corner and I do come in here and steal these from him every so often. This is Terry Mugler Amen Pure Havana which is a beautiful tobacco-y version of Amen. And then here we have Karafi from Latafa. And this is a really lovely, smoky, sweet fragrance. I think it's supposed to be reminiscent of um, pink sugar, black sugar? I think that's what it's called. This is really nice. It smells really good on my husband. And then we have this is one my husband stole from me. This is Dame Perfumery's New Musk Oil. This is a really nice, um, clean, but really unique musk oil. I like the oil form of this because it really sinks into your skin and has a nice sillage about it. 
And then there are a few interesting ones. Forgive these poor dilapidated labels. These are from Body Time that had awesome fragrance oils. They were based out of Berkeley, or Berkeley rather, um, tobacco smoke. And this this thick one here is their Egyptian musk oil that was this really beautiful, rich, uh, Tunisian, Egyptian musk. One of my favorite Egyptian musks of all time. I have one backup, but sadly they went out of business. So I am treasuring my little bottle of that. And then of course the ever classic Kiehl's original musk oil. This was my husband's signature when we first met. He's worn this for years and years and it smells fantastic on him. Such a good musk oil. Okay, I'm just, I'm sorry. I'm just noticing my dirty mirror. I'm very sorry about that. Um, oh, and this. This is actually a fragrance that I blend myself. This is the last dregs of this batch, and I will be making another batch of this. This is like a, a, a real Palo Santo patchouli type of fragrance oil that I, I wear pretty often. Um, and yeah, if there's anything you have questions about, let me know down below and I will see you in the next video. Bye.